Okay, we are we are now live. <laughs> okay, Paras, do you want to just uh, do a quick introduction? Do you want to introduce Peter for us? Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. This is Peter. Uh, no, sorry, this is Paris. <laughs> um, Peter is our uh, uh, guest speaker for tonight. He's from all the way from Kenya, um, and he is a full-time beekeeper out in Kenya. He also is, <laughs> is raising um, gentle bees in Kenya itself and promoting that sort of gene pool uh, by breeding gentle bees. He's educating uh, the local uh, with beekeeping, and he is also, um, you know, uh, producing his own hives as well. So he's got his own um, hive um, uh, uh, workshop um, where he makes his hives and sells that as well. Um, I won't take too much of Peter's time in the presentation. I would want to welcome Peter tonight and um, to tell us about the experience of beekeeping in Kenya and what it is, what's it's like there. Yes, he's black. Thank you for inviting me. Good evening, everyone. As you've heard, I'm Peter from Kenya doing beekeeping as a hobby, as a, a professional. My beekeeping started as um, early as nine, uh, 2014, sorry. And it's been a journey. And when I got this invitation, I was very happy to share my experience with you guys. I hope we'll all learn from the presentation and our meeting today. <coughs> so to start with just an overview of the types of honey honeybees that we have here in Kenya. Um these are the we have Did about you? four pieces of Apis malpera, which are the bees common for um, honey production, sorry. And the most common ones that I've dealt with is the number three and number, number two and number three, which is mostly found in arid and semi-arid um, uh, region of Kenya. But this part is left for researchers who will be um, doing more research on the bees that are found in Kenya. So for me, I'm just dealing with my bees as uh, the different diseases that are common uh, just for honey production and um, promoting beekeeping in Kenya. If we go to the next uh, product um, presentation, I started with about three beehives, but as as time goes by, you go increasing your numbers as you gain experience, just like everybody else. And my preference for um, beehives, um, Langstroth. We have different types of uh, beehives, but um, Langstroth is easy to manage when it comes to inspections, breeding and harvesting. It's easier for me, that is why I chose to deal basically even in, when it comes to production, I'm just dealing with Rangstrode beehive. A standard Rangstrode beehive, which will uh, be easier for any beekeeping with a beekeeper who is going to beekeeping to be able to manage. As of now, I have two different locations, uh, two apiaries in two different locations, managing up to 50 beehives and looking to add some more. When it comes to honey production in Kenya, uh, my experience is we have about eight to 10 kgs average um, honey harvest per beehive. But um, this will range from region to region and um, there are some region will, which will give you more, more honey production than the others uh, due to different uh, vegetation. And the harvest uh, frequency per, per year also depends with the region, which for me basically is about twice per year. The, we'll go to the next place, uh, the next presentation. 
the next page, please. Oh yeah. We in Kenya we have um, other types of beehives, and the most common ones are the Kenya top beehive. We have the um, horizontal beehive, which is an extended version of Langston beehive. Just that doesn't have the supers. We also have box beehive, which is just a top beehive <laughs> made of um, uh, just out of a box. But the frames, the difference between these be uh, beehives are the frames. You find that the horizontal beehive has Langstroth beehive, uh, Langstroth hive uh, frame story inside. For the box hive, has the Kenya top bar hive frame inside. So that is how uh, you can be able now to differentiate the two, which are the most common Kenya top bar hive, horizontal uh, beehive, and then the, the box beehive. For the traditional one, it's just a the circular um, back of a tree that is curved to, or a log that is curved to be a beehive. Um, those are the most common uh, beehives, but uh, found that found in Kenya. But um, common ones, as they said, the Langstroth and the KTBH. And I think even in your countries in um, UK, you have the KTBH, if I'm not wrong. We can go to the next uh, presentation, the next page. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. When it comes to honey production, we have one of the best region. We have the best honey in the region, mostly coming from traditional beehive, which is very common. And this is because it's easier for people to adapt the traditional beehive without much um, input in terms of cash. So you find that in almost every uh, every region that people are doing beekeeping, they always start with the traditional beehive. So if we look at the production of honey in, in Kenya, most of it is coming from the traditional beehive. And then now nowadays guys are going to uh, the modern beehives that uh, Rangstow and uh, Katie behave. So they are competing in terms of honey production. These are just a, a, few, a few photos from my own production of honey, starting with the first one, which is a, a well capped um, uh, shadow super. Then we have the one in the container, that is just a crushed um, honey from one of the KTBH. When it comes to harvesting, they have different uh, versions of harvesting and uh, different types of, ex uh, types of extracting the honey that we have. And the last one there is a, a deep super. Uh, in that photo, a deep super of um, one of my beehives that I had put as um for honey production so you can you can clearly see that now different uh, variations of lung stores you'll get different variations of honey frames which is good for experimenting and um, uh, production in in terms of honey production we can go to the next um in kenya we are facing some of the challenges as um, the keepers, which is one lack of equipment, um, lack of funds to start the beekeeping and acquiring hives and acquiring equipment for extraction and uh, gears like uh, bee suits and all that. Lack of training is another challenge that you'll find. People are willing to go to beekeeping, but they don't have proper training when it comes to beekeeping. We also have substandard, which is a major, major um, challenge when it comes to beehive production. We have substandard beehives when now 
if you really want to do your good production, it becomes a challenge when it comes to harvesting, inspection, and even colonization. Because if the bees, the the beehives are just made as per the photos you can see here, it becomes a challenge for the bees to colonize the um your beehive. Then we have bee phobia. So many people are afraid of bees just like for the lack of understanding on how to handle bees. So it becomes difficult for them to be convinced that you can go to beekeeping, handle your bees properly, manage them well for your production and the coexistence of the um, um the coexistence of your um honey 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 bees and honey production. Um the other one is pests and predators which will have um wax moths uh, ants, black ants, safari ants, varroa mites. Those are the uh, the most common when it comes to pests that we have um, ma making our bees one ups abscond or have low production of uh, honey because our bees are not um, comfortable in their um, environment. The other one is um, raw production, which is um a major cause of um either either people not uh, putting up uh, proper apiaries or proper beehives or not having enough forage for the bees that translates to raw production of honey and um low low occupation of our uh, um beehives then um, our bees are also prone to absconding when it comes to either prolonged drought or dry season disturbances when it comes to inspection and um, all those will determine would are the challenges that we are facing as beekeepers in Kenya when it comes to beekeeping. We also have theft theft of both beehives and honey there are those who are going to steal your honey for illicit brews or they just go and um, make the uh, raw coricas from your honey harvest or they're just malicious uh, just destroying your your beehive then the other one is lack of proper quality control in both them um, Behave production and honey production. You find that, let's say you want to sell honey, everybody is uh, not sure whether the, their type of honey are, they are giving them is natural bee, um, natural honey, or it, um, you've you've interfered with the quality. This this happens when now. We come to having um, middlemen who are looking at um, who are looking at making shortcuts when it comes to honey production. Then the last one will have uh, undegraded pest and uh, pesticide story and herbicide. They'll also have a challenge when it comes to our beekeeping. Let's go to the next slide. These are just some of the photos of what we've covered. As uh, these are few beekeepers who are willing to go into beekeeping, but either they lack proper beehives, proper knowledge of uh, beekeeping, or just the local uh, equipment that can be delivered to support their passion for beekeeping. And you'll find that in every region, you go and find such instances of guys who have passion for beekeeping, but they can't uh, access the proper equipment. So if we go to the next one, we have the poor setup of apiaries and poor handling of honey, which now, if you look at the, like the last picture there, that is honey being collected in a, a local correction center for um, 
a beekeeping group. Um, you can clearly see the hygienic standards are wanting. The other one now, if you crowd your beehive in such an environment, you'll also have um, low colonization date for your beehives. And all these are challenges that are facing beekeepers in general and um, in different regions of uh, our beekeeping industry. We can go to the next one. When it comes to predators, we have quite a number of predators that are um, common in Kenya. One, um, we have the honey badger. We have the um, ants, spiders, snakes, wasps. All these will affect um, a beekeeper in one way or another. But the most common ones, honey badger, wax molds, um, beetles. Those are the main the main um, predators that will affect your production in honey in uh, your honey production in your beehive and in your uh, honey production sector. But there are ways of there are ways of um, ensuring that all these are tackled to prevent your loss in honey production and. Uh, and uh, loss of your colony, sorry. If we go to the next one, we have the solutions to beekeeping challenges. And one we say, we can ensure high yield per beehive by one, educating the beekeepers or the local beekeepers in terms of uh, apiary management and um, crony management. We have an average of about 30 kgs or 30 kilograms per beehive per year. That is 10 kgs per harvest. If you manage your beehive well, you have about three, k uh, three harvests per, per year, which is well manageable if we have the proper education and uh, the proper skills of handling our bees and handling our big uh, beekeeping um, ventures. Then the other one we're looking at is use of proper harvesting methods. We have a lot of loss when it comes to honey production due to crude methods of harvesting honey. And um, when it comes to sieving, packaging, we have a lot of losses when it comes to that. So those are some of the um, challenges that um, can be improved to increase the production of uh, honey production in Kenya. We can also grade our honey according to the regions where now every beekeeper comes from a different region. So we can decide now if it's the arid or the higher sides of Kenya, we can grade our honey so that now it, can, it becomes competitive. And when it's competitive, we'll encourage more guys to go into the market because their product will fetch more money. When it's well packaged, well uh, harvested, hygienically handled, and uh, well graded. Then we have trainings that are conducted and um, to individuals groups, women groups, and the youth. Those are the major players when it comes to the industry uh, who are looking into going into the beekeeping sector. So if we manage and um, educate our youth, educate and empower women, and uh, equip, equip them with the proper uh, um, equipment to go into beekeeping, will increase the production of honey in Kenya and in the East African region uh, uh, in general. And informing the um, groups, we are trying to eliminate the midwomen who will come and just sell honey that is coming from wherever they get it from, not directly from the beekeepers, and discouraging the beekeeper 
from selling the products because of um, because of their um, cheap prices that they should cut the uh, the big buy. If we go to the next one, okay. Yeah, we have now the other challenge that we will face is um, colonization. When it comes to beekeeping in Kenya, most of the guys, um, they, they, they are looking at getting their colonies from the natural environment, which will one take time to for the bees to come in. It will also discourage them because now if you are taking two or three three months just before you get to starting your uh, venture you lose the interest that is um, there when you're starting up the followings are just the methods that people use to make their beehives more attractive um, for colonization which is now making the beehive uh, biting the beehives using either propolis, lemon grass, bee work, maintaining a clean hive, um, or placing a catcher box, which in most cases you call the nuke box, into the um, environment. Then um, you can also go to dividing colonies, transferring wild colonies or traditional managed colonies, and also queen daring, which is a new venture now that we're looking at in trying to tackle the beehive uh, colonization that's uh, just a photo of one of my queen daring um, project that i'm doing here in Ad river that was just me harvesting the queens from one of the nukes that i used to rear the queens Um, we can go to the next one. So the the main reasons as to why we go to queen daring is just to increase the colonies and um, help in colonization. Also, due to the 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 type of bees that we have here, we are trying to raise calm bees that are easy to work with. Anyone who has worked with African bees will tell you that. It's, it's tough. It's tough working with them. So we're trying to make a, a, a colony that will be easier for everyone to work with. Have genetics that are less prone to swarming. That is one of the characteristics of African, African bees. So all this will be attained by going into queen dairy. And for me as a beekeeper, this is a venture that I'm looking at going into full time, which is just, uh, as from the photos you can see, these are just a few of the attempts that I've been doing for queen daring, but looking at going into it full time. We can go to the next one. Um, that's just a photo of my queen cups, I use I use um, natural bee cups, uh, queen cups. But um, in most cases, the guys who are doing queen daring, they are plastic queen cups that have found that for bees to accept them, it becomes an issue for them to accept the queen cups. But when you give them um, the wax queen cups, it's easier for them to have a, a, a better acceptance for the queen, uh, the, the grafts that you give into them. This is an area that still under research and uh, under experimentation. So it's just my experience. There are maybe guys who will say, uh, for them, plastic queen cups works better, but for me, works. Um, B wax cups works better. So that's just my short um, presentation for my experience.
um maybe i've just rushed through the presentation and maybe you guys would have some questions to ask and uh, for anyone who have a question i'll be able to answer as they come uh, yeah, that's pretty good um one of the things that uh, I, I think that you um have in kenya is probably distance as well um you know like uh, transportation and stuff how you um the, the, i'm from kenya as well so you know i know i've seen people go walking to long distances and the challenges that you get um, on your journey basically um, and some of these beekeepers that you have in rural areas just if you can give us a bit of gist on that as well you know that'd be great um when it comes to transportation we'll have a challenge of one poor roads to wherever guys are doing um beekeeping projects you'll find that in most cases beekeeping was started in arid and semi-arid areas which was a way of raising their living standards in those areas you'll find that there are no proper roads so even if you have a proper vehicle it becomes a challenge for you to either take the beehive there or maybe go take the honey so there are those who will just use either a cart drawn by donkeys or cows just to transport the beehive or transport honey to the nearest market or even use the nowadays we have the motorcycles which are easier now to maneuver in such areas to deliver either beehive or honey or even take the guys who are going for training to help with the groups out there if that answers your question yeah that's great um we've got a few questions coming in um about the honey harvest about the amount so you, you mentioned that on average people tend to get about eight kgs which is which is really low actually what, what do you think the reason for that is is that just because of the way people manage or when, is it something when it else? comes to honey production there are there are three uh, I, i said there are three types of um um factors that would uh, affect your production one is the type of colony you have the other one is the type of environment that uh, your bees your bees are some some of the environments are very harsh for your bees, bees to have a proper harvest mm -hmm. the other one will be um, lack of proper management people are either late for harvest or they don't know the actual time to do their harvest so in, in most cases you don't have the consistent production per year yeah we, which is a gap now okay. trying to show people that in beekeeping this is supposed to be done on a daily or let's say in a monthly basis you must have at least one inspection as you go by that is the only way now you have increase in terms of honey production per behave so it's really education then that you yeah. need to do educate people how yeah. to be properly yeah and you mentioned that with your um the way you're looking at things now you're you can get up to 30 yeah you cases. can because now if on average let's say per behave you get 10 10 kgs per behave and you manage well you have a three times per year then uh, the 30 kg is very possible well wow, that's great um we've, we've got a, a very interesting question here um can you tell us more about the pests that you have in kenya um what does the honey badger do also the beetles um, can you just explain about some of the pests a bit more and how you go about managing them as well okay um for the pests that we have I'll just mention a few which is now ants uh wax moth and uh, safari ants those are the most common ones and to manage them you either use you hang your you, you either you hang your beehive or you use used oil to pour around your apiary just to deter the ants from climbing up your beehive or use grease to deter the ants from going to your um, into your beehive 
for wax molds, it's basically maintaining a healthy colony to yeah. avoid the uh, the wax molds attacking your your your, your colonies. There is one who has asked for the pesticides. Yes, um, it's talking about honey badgers and beetles. Oh, sorry, yeah, honey mm. badgers. What they do, they dismantle, they dismantle the um, beehive and eat all your honey, or even the all the combs inside the the beehive, making your colonies up on your beehive and you're left with the damaged uh, equipment. That is um, in some areas which are prone to honey badgers, those are the challenges they are facing. How, how do you manage them? Is there a way to manage uh, that? Most of most of the management is just hanging, having the beehive at a, a, a certain height, about two meters above the ground or 1.5 meters. Uh, sorry, not meters, but feet above the ground. That will deter the honey badger from um, knocking down the the beehive. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. We we only have the wax moth here <laughs> out of the list that you talked about, and varroa. Obviously, we have varroa as well. Uh, oh. Varroa in our in our environment, there are some that are there, but not very common. Not very common for our, our bees, but in few cases you'll find people talking of they have mites in their beehive. Come on, yeah. Okay, great. Um, okay, this is another question here. So, do you have any cold periods when the bees are less active, and does a queen lay all year? Because in the UK we uh, have a we have a very cold period, which is now, and then yeah. usually the you know the bees are um, they they're in the hive all the time. And the queen stops laying for a certain amount of time. But do you have something similar? Yeah, for us we have something similar. But ours is now during the dark season when it's a bit dry. The queen will throw down in her laying patterns until now when the rains come. So ours is a bit different. It's just uh, not very cold. But when we have dry season, now the uh, the um, colonies are a bit inactive. Okay, so it's when there's no nectar coming into the hive. That's yeah, no, yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, and what month is that in usually? Um, between now, like um, when December, November, August, they are both. But it also depends with the region. Different regions have different that season. Okay, all right, yeah. perfect. Um, okay, and, and you talked about the different type of hive types that you have. So you mentioned about the horizontal, you mentioned about the Langstroth. So what's, what's your personal preferences? My, my personal preference is the Langstroth behavior. Langstroth mm -hmm. behavior is easier to manage, easier to manipulate, and is even to harvest than the, the KTBH, the horizontal, and the traditional behavior. When it comes to honey harvesting, they have different types of uh, different methods. Like if I mentioned just a few, if you compare Langstroth with when now you just extract using an extractor, KTBH or the Kenya top bar hive, you have to squeeze out the honey. Mm. Traditional, you have to squeeze out the honey, where now you're just destroying all the work the bees have done and giving them more work to either build a comb just before you do your next harvest. For the boss hive and the horizontal, they are just the same, only the different is the frame. We have the Kenya top bar hive in a box hive and horizontal uh, beehive has the lungs of the frame. So when it comes to harvesting, they will have the same uh, methods of harvesting. Okay, that's great. Yeah. All right, here's, we, we've got a few more questions coming in. Um, so this is from Eric. He was saying a very nice story about your career. Um, I like your list of solutions to beekeeping development in Kenya. What is the main reason you think for the lack of development? Um, lack of, okay, it's, maybe we say lack of development in beekeeping, but not in the general. Uh, in beekeeping, but, yeah, beekeeping. Yeah, in beekeeping, it's just uh, one lack of uh, proper information out there for the guys who are willing to go into beekeeping. They look at it as just a normal venture that has no money. 
but if we educate people that you can do these things professionally, commercially, people will try to go into, more people try to go into beekeeping and they'll have proper equipments that will also attract more guys into bringing in more cash for the either research or equipment into beekeeping. Mm. So just campaigning about trainings and uh, information getting to the consumers, consumers out there. So how many beekeepers do you think you have in your area? Um, in most cases, I have, we have different uh, number of uh, beekeepers. I can't put a, a specific number, but there are quite a number of them. And I know, depending on the region, you'll find that about 30, 40 okay. and growing. Okay. The difference between our region and your region is that in Kenya, most of them are doing them. I'm doing beekeeping individually. Mm. But uh, if we join and form groups, it will be easier now to monitor per, per region how many beekeepers are there. Yeah. 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 All right, here's one from Simon. Um, he says, you mentioned four types of honeybee in Kenya. And I think you said there were two in your area. So do you farm both of them? Uh, are, are you able to deter the aggressive hives, the aggressive bees? Yes, in, in most cases, you'll find that um, you have two types of um, bees, even in, in terms of appearance. And one is more product, productive than the other. One is more aggressive than the other. So it's easier for you to tell which uh, race of bees you have. So the aggressive one is not the productive one. Is that what you're saying? No, the the aggressive one will be more productive than the oh, other. Oh, is it? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Probably because shame. they can defend themselves from predators and better. Yeah, and they're more active. And they're more active, yeah. Mm. Wow. But that's not the one that you're trying to rear from, I take it. You're trying no, to... No, I'm trying, I'm trying to rear the other one, which is a bit uh, easier for us to handle. Okay, so you have to take a bit of a hit on terms of the amount of honey that's coming in, but it's easier to work with the hives. Yeah, that is one. The other one is now to have a proper way of data, data correction so that we can compare between the ones that we are saying they're aggressive and between mm. the ones that we are saying are calm. Given the same environment of uh, beekeeping, can they do the same production per harvest? Those are now the research we are talking about of people experimenting, having data and uh, well-managed apiaries to have uh, those comparisons. Okay. So it's probably yeah. not something that has uh, records been kept in the past to actually determine whether they are mm -hmm. productive or... Uh... In most cases, uh, for me, I haven't found the records, but uh, you'll find that it's people saying that if I have a, a, um, an aggressive beehive, I'll have more production of honey. But my argument is, if you have a weak colony, of course it won't be aggressive. If you have a weak queen, of course it won't be aggressive. So that will also translate to you not having enough honey as compared to the aggressive uh, colony. So yeah. give them the, the same environment, have the same age of queens, have the same number of bees in terms of weight, and then we compare the production. That is the only way to answer that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, here's, here's an interesting one. So this is a question from Uti. Uh, she thanks you, first of all, for the great presentation. Um, she's asking, does flowering mainly occur during the rainy season or throughout the whole year? And are there plenty of crops that the bees can forage on? So when do you mainly get flowering occurring? Um, mainly after the rain season, we have a lot of flowers coming in, a lot of shrubs growing in and uh, forages for the bees. Um, that is just after, after the, the rains. For the plants, they are talking about the plenty of crops for the bee to forage on. Yeah, it depends with the region also. There are regions when even if we have a lot of rain, the vegetation either have been cut down when we have to talk of the trees that have been cut down in some regions. So 
you won't have a lot of flowers coming in that you get here. And what would you say the main crops you have are? So what, what would the bees mainly be foraging on? Um, in most regions, let's say, we do normal agricultural uh, farming, where we have maize, beans, mangoes, which are fruits now, oranges. Those are the main. Then we have the, the traditional trees, the acacia tree, eucalyptus, um, the bottle brush. Those are the supplements when it comes to either nectar or pollen in different regions. That's great. Peter, Thank you. Peter, you have, I mean, I think one of the things that is also, I think, interesting is um, how long are your rains? I know you have two rain periods. One is the short rains and the long rains. Um, what's uh, what's the period of the rain that we get uh, that you get in Kenya and you know in different regions? I know it's probably different, but in the area that you're beekeeping, uh, what are the the periods of rain that you get? Because it's a couple of days which you have continuous rainfall. Um, yeah, we, we, in most cases we look at uh, between March and uh, June when we have the long season, the long rainy season. And then we have in some regions from um, September to December, we have the short days coming in. So those will substitute into the types of flowers and shrubs that are growing into those different regions. But mainly the, the main one that is of almost across all the region is between March and June, the, we have the long season here. So oh, here's an interesting one. <laughs> How often um, have your hives been stolen or damaged? Does it happen often? Um, for, for my case, mine haven't been stolen or damaged, but it depends with the location where you put your beehive in. Mm. So if maybe you put in an in an apiary where nobody is monitoring your beehive, of course they will be damaged or they'll be stolen. At times you have a very big chamber and fenced. People will trespass and uh, if they get something to steal, there are so many jobless guys here, so yeah. they're just looking at the cheap stuff to pick. Yeah. So yeah, so it can happen. Sim similar here, I suppose, um, out of sight is best. Exactly. All right. Um, I think you touched upon this earlier, but could you go into this in a bit more detail? So how, how do you deal with wax moth in Kenya? Um, wax moth, in most cases, we say have a strong colony. The, that's the easiest way to manage a wax moth. But let's say you've been attacked by a wax moth. One, reduce the space that you've given your bees. If you had a super on, it means now they can't defend the super, so you have to reduce the size of the area they are keeping warm or they are cleaning. So just remove the, beehive, the super on. If it was a 10 frame and you still find the colony is small, uh, reduce the size again to either a five frame or a three frame and let them build. It's easier for them to protect a small area than a bigger area. Uh, also remove the damaged frames because now those are where the eggs have been laid and they will overcome the, the colony as the eggs are hatching. So the other one now we can say reduce the entrance of your bee, beehive just to help the the bees defend the the the, the colony. Yeah. All right, that's great. Thank you. Um, two. <laughs> oh, this is from Eric. Um, what percentage of consumed um, honey, I take it, in Kenya is imported, and do you do you achieve good prices for your home product? Um, when it comes to percentage of consumption of honey in Kenya. I don't have the actual data, but in most cases, in the ministry, you will find those information, uh, either in the ministry or uh, different publications online. There are those guys who are looking into the production of honey. But uh, with, at times, we get good prices if you have a prime product, uh, uh, prime honey product. You get a good price, both them. Um, Rockery and even for those who are looking at importation, uh, exportation, sorry, you'll fetch a good price for your honey. Yeah. So, do you export your honey or is it mainly for the local market? 
for me, it's just for the local market. We can't even sustain the local market. The, oh. We don't have enough guys in production to sustain the local market. Okay, so but there are guys who are, there's a big gap here, yeah, but there are guys who are doing export, but they just omit the local uh, local market. It's not that the local market is activated, no. And how much, how much do you sell your, your jars for local local ones? Okay, I sell my bee, my, my honey between 800 per kg to 1,000 per kg. So that's that is roughly about kg. 10 pounds. Sorry, say that again, 10 pounds did you say? Yeah, this 135 pounds per uh, 135 Kenya shillings to a pound. So uh, Peter talking about that's a thousand shillings, you say? Yes, yes. Yeah, thousand, a thousand, thousand shillings. Yeah, yeah. That's good. That's a good. That's a good price. Simil similar, similar to what yeah. yeah, yeah. But only when you have a prime one. There are guys who are selling them cheap, uh, getting from the wherever they get them from. Okay. So. So it's a premium product that you're selling where yes, you yes. yeah the good rates on there and you mentioned something earlier in your talk about um adulteration of the honey so you said that yeah. you have some people that adulterate the honey um wh what do they do and how how can you determine if it's been adulterated in in most cases they these are just guys who are doing shortcuts either adding some sugar syrup or at times you you hear people talking of adding some fruits like um, banana puree. So in most cases, if you want to know how best your honey is, you just either have um, a rub test done on your honey or you just get your honey direct from the beekeepers. Know your beekeepers, get direct honey from them. That mm. is the easiest way of uh, having a guarantee of your, your product. And also now people having the etiquette of selling a, a genuine product most of them are out there just for the shortcut quick money yeah it's it's a problem which is global all yeah. over yes yeah. yes yeah same problem all over the world at the moment unfortunately yes, yes. yeah peter, okay peter, um, peter, peter do you do you sell your honey in nairobi or do you sell in Athi river or because there's a dis distance in terms of so where is your local honey being sold um okay my my market is uh, in different regions because most of my posts are done online. So I'll yeah. get guys in Nairobi, I'll get guys in Mombasa, I'll get guys in uh, Nanyuki. So as long as I have a uh, parcel services that can deliver, I, I sell to whoever wants to buy whatever he is. Okay, so you do par parceling of your honey, basically? Y yes, yes. Yeah. That's great. Um, all right, we have one more question. Um, you mentioned that you are encouraging young people and women to become beekeepers. So are most beekeepers in the area men at the moment? Yeah, in most cases, culturally, you find that uh, men are the guys who went into beekeeping. And uh, we have this notion that uh, this kind of venture is done by men only. So. And also the mentality that not only young men, but old, old men who've been retired. So this is their venture. If you come out of courage, the keeping is not for you. So if we encourage the youth, those, those are coming out of courage, they are looking for something to do. The women also we encourage them that this is just like any other venture into farming. It's an mm -hmm. agricultural venture. Then it will be easier for them to accept. Um, beekeeping. Yeah, yeah. That, that's great. So it needs to be sh shown to people that it can be a profession. You can actually make a, a living out of it. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. All right, great. Um, I think we're coming to the end of the questions, actually. Um, yeah, I think, that was, I think that was the majority of them. You, you mentioned one other pest earlier as well which i found quite interesting you mentioned something it was on the screen about a particular kind of cat i think you said what, what was that then you, was it a civet cat or something i think you mentioned uh sorry where i think it was it was one of the um things on the presentation oh, yeah yes yes a civet cats uh we, i think you call them um there's a name you call them um, can't. Does Karash know what it is? 
it's called a civet cut. Um, but uh, does it? I, I never thought they actually uh, they they go for honey uh, yeah. or bees. Do they actually go they, for, they go for honey? Honey. Oh, okay, so they actually actually uh, tear the the hive up to go to the honey itself. Yes, yes. It's it's yeah. It, um, it's 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 a it's a wild cat basically. It's it's a very oh, small wow. sort of yeah. It's a small sort of cat. Um, but I never I never knew that actually. <laughs> uh, In yeah. some regions, they are there, especially for the guys who are doing big being near either a forest or a national yeah. reserve. Yeah, yeah, those will have uh, such uh, big predators coming into their their behind or their apiary. And then there's also the um, honey bird, or as well that uh, actually looks for the honey as well, isn't it? Yeah, they look for the yeah. honey and also they feed on the bees. They will the find bees them as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They knock on the they knock outside and they and they eat on the bees and they also disturb, the honey. Yeah, <laughs> they disturb the bees for them to come out. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You have so many more pests than we do. Thank. <laughs> we have more challenges than you do, but we oh, also wow. have the best environment for beekeeping. If only beekeeping was done professionally the way you guys do it. For us, we are, we still have a lot to learn from you guys in terms of uh, professional beekeeping. But at least you're doing the education side now as well, so the message is being uh, spread. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right, great. I think um, that was all of the questions, actually. Um, yeah, just wanted to thank you, really, Peter. It was a really enjoyable talk. Um, we've learned so much from you know the information you've given us, and it's all completely new to us. You know, a lot of the things you've been talking about, we've we never experienced it here in the in the United Kingdom. So it's been a, a real eye opener, and um, it's it's been really enjoyable. So, from me and from a few other people on the call, um, we just want to you know thank you. For your time but i know it's almost, it's almost midnight as well where you are so yeah. just just, yeah. just to mention to everyone peter's available on uh, facebook so anyone wants to um you know look up his facebook he's got a lot more uh posts on facebook about his beekeeping um also the way he makes his tools is quite interesting you know he makes his own tools to make his frames um he's on hives uh it's quite uh, Peter's got a very uh, genius mind in doing, you know, these uh, on building of his own equipment. Uh, you know, um, Hoover for the uh, is it um, you do the Hoover for the uh, when you're getting swarms and stuff and um, uh, for Bee Hoover. Um, so Peter's done a lot of those stuff. So if you are very interested in to look at what Peter's done, have a look at Peter on his Facebook. Um, you can find Peter on his Facebook. Um, Peter, do you want to actually give uh, how pe people can find you on Facebook? Yeah, you can share with them, please. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is it just your name? Is it Peter, or do you have a do you have a company it's, name? It's my name. It's my name, Peter Maina Mashira. Okay. All right. Yes. We can we can find that. Yeah. It's a library about beekeeping. Yeah. All right. Um, just one thing quickly before we go. Um, so would, would you consider working with UK beekeeping development charities? I don't know if you do that already. We have a charity here called Bees Abroad and Bees for Development. Have you heard of those charities before? I've heard of them, but uh, at the moment I'm not working with any. Uh, I wouldn't mind working with them. Anybody dealing with beekeeping, uh, bees, it's what has brought us together across the ocean. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. All right, perfect. Okay, I think that's the last question that we have. And um, I think we'll let you go, Peter. It's almost midnight where you are. I know it's very late. And, um, you know, once again, just thank thanks a lot for everything and for joining us today. Um, it's been, been, been really good. Yeah. So, Sante thank sana. You. <laughs> <Hope> we, <laughs> thank you for your time, Watson. <laughs> thank you for inviting me. It's been an eye-opener for that, such a discussion with you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. No, thank you.